Greetings, everyone. Today, we're going to start solving rational equations. The first day, we're going to cover two fractions, which are similar to a proportion. You'll definitely want to take notes of these examples, and you might need a calculator to help you along the way. Our objective is we're going to learn how to solve rational expressions with two fractions. So how is this different? Well, the last half of the unit and our last assessment was all simplifying, meaning there was no equal sign. Now we're going to have an equal sign, which means we need to solve. Our answers should look like x equals and then a value. Let's review this algebra skill. When you have two fractions that are equal to each other, you can cross multiply to solve that equation. So just a quick review what that would have looked like in the past. If I have 1 half equals x over 5, I'd cross multiply and get 5 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, and I have my solution of 5 halves. You've done these simple cross multiplying problems in the past, but now we have expressions. So we have to be careful of following our rules of distribution, foiling, and combining like terms. So if I take a look at this first example, if I write it out, I have a nine times an x equals a three times an x plus two. Now that x plus two is a factor, so you're gonna make sure to distribute that three. On the left side, I still have nine x, but now on the other side, I have three x plus six. You're trying to get x by itself, so we now have 6x equals 6. Divide both sides. I end up with x equals 1. Now, we are going to run into instances where we have more than one x value. To start off, these only have one value. Make sure to check your answer. If I plug 1 in for all of the x values, I end up with a three equal to a nine over, oops, excuse me, nine over a three. Nine divided by three simplifies down to three. So I know that I'm right just by plugging it back in. Let's take a look at another one. I wanna cross multiply because I have a fraction equal to a fraction. I have a 3 times a 2x plus 4, bring down my equals, I have an x plus 2 times an x minus 3. If I distribute, I end up with a 6x plus 12. Now remember, this is a skill we need to continue to practice, first, outer, inner, last. If I use my FOIL rules, I will end up with this expression, which can then, of course, combine like terms. So we end up with that on the right side. Now, my goal is to get x by itself, so I need to move everything to one side. You can decide which side that is but sometimes there are little tricks. So for example, my x squared is on the right side. I kind of want to keep it there. So let's actually move everything else to the other side. Subtract the 6x, subtract the 12. Subtract the 6x, subtract the 12. That leaves me with a zero on the left side. I bring down my x squared. I have a negative one, subtract six negative seven. I have a negative six, subtract 12, negative 18. If I look, I have a trinomial. Factoring is not going away. If I do my AC method quick, gotta be nine and two with a negative nine. If I do grouping, 
I would have an x minus 9, take out a 2x minus 9. My factors are x plus 2 and x minus 9. All of this is still equal to 0. This portion right here is not new. Once everything's moved to one side, starting right here, this looks like the last unit that we already assessed on. So I know that x equals negative 2 or 9. We can still check our answers. I'm going to check out the negative 2 first. If I plug that in for all of my x values, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Hmm. Equals negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 4 is 0. Now, technically, this is undefined, right? We can never divide by 0. But both sides are undefined. So that tells me I'm in the right direction. Let's check out the 9. If I plug in 9, I end up with an 11 and a 6 and an 18 plus a 4. So that's a 22. Now that right fraction reduces as top and bottom are both divisible by 3. So I can, oh, excuse me, divisible by 2, which gives me 3 over 11. So I've confirmed that that 9 works. In this example, we have a fraction equal to a fraction. So we're going to cross multiply. That means I'm taking 4 times the x plus 5 and the x plus 1 times the x minus 1. Make sure that if you have a value up front that you're using the process of distribution. If you have a binomial times a binomial, you need to use FOIL. Combine like terms as much as you can. Well, in this case, my outer and inner cancel. So I'm left with difference of squares. And if I look, that makes sense where I ended up. Now, if I want to move everything to one side, it doesn't matter which side, remember, but I want to keep the x squared where it is. So I'm going to subtract the 4x and subtract the 20. If you would prefer to do these in individual steps, please do so. I'm going to subtract 4x and subtract a 20. That means I have 0 remaining on the left side. I have an x squared. I don't have an x term to subtract the 4x from, so it's almost like I have a 0x minus 4x. So that will remain negative 4x. For my constants, I have a negative 1, subtract 20, so negative 21. As of right now, this was our whole last unit. I need to factor and set my factors equal to 0. I'll show AC method really quick. You need to take some time with that factoring still, make sure you do so. Our factors are x minus 7 and x plus 3. If I set each factor equal to 0, I should end up with a 7 and a negative 3. We want to check our answers. I'm going to check the 7 first. If I plug in 7 for x, I end up with 4 eighths equals to 6 twelfths. Let's simplify that. It breaks down to 1 half equals 1 half, which is true. So I'm good to go there. Let's check our negative 3. 4 over a negative 2 and negative 4 over a 2. Left side simplifies down to negative 2, 
and right side simplifies down to negative 2. So I know my negative 3 is correct as well. So take the time to check those answers. You know if you've done the work correctly just by that simple check. For this last slide, I'm not going to go through this question. This one is going to be your exit ticket. So I would ask that you still please put this in your notes and I will come around and check to see how you did on this one. This will allow me to make sure that you watch the video and that you feel comfortable with these type of questions. Maybe put a circle or a star by this one to identify it if we don't get to check it immediately. But good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Take advantage of Sabre time and we'll see you soon.